Not here, he's telling me. I'm taking a picture. I didn't know you owned the street. Hi, I'm Adam Robbie Gunn. I've been doing street photography since about 2001. I started in Sydney, uh, did a bit in China, and obviously now here in Brisbane. Uh, for me, street photography has always just been a way to express the way that I see the world, particularly in Brisbane, a way to connect with, with, the, with the city and, and try and maybe become more a part of the place that I'm living. Hi, my name's Lou Gilbert. Uh, I started street photography about 18 months ago. I was with a small group of interested photographers and we went out for a mentor uh, and it just made it a little bit easier to understand what it is. I'm still grappling with what it is, but I'm finding that I, I really like what I'm seeing. So for me, street photography is about seeing differently. Hi, I'm Steve Finkel. I, I'm a photographer based in Brisbane. I got into photography at quite a young age, around seven. My father was a photographer, so I kind of had photography all around me. So I spent a lot of my younger years in the darkroom. And street photography is one of those genres of photography that's really interests me because back in those days, I shot a lot of black and white film because of A, because it was cheap and it could process it myself. But it's great for stuff like street photography, telling stories. I have traveled all around the world and done street photography in most countries in the world. I do love coming back to Brisbane. There's a lot of hidden gems in Brisbane that people don't know. If you get out, walk the streets, there's little areas that you can go to and um, there's just, just some magic there to be captured. I'm all about the light. So if I see some really beautiful light, you know, and, and uh, you know, a bit of light reflecting off surfaces or, or, you know, deep contrast between the bright and the dark parts. For me, that's what brings drama to an image. I kind of see it like setting a stage, you know. I'll, I'll see a setting that looks great. If the light is falling in a beautiful way, then I'll basically stick to that spot and I'll wait for people to walk into the scene. It's kind of like waiting for players to come onto the stage. So that's kind of my approach usually. It's getting that combination of something that's quirky, there are echoes, the colour combination. Colour always attracts me to a shot. It's finding that moment that I love. I've been told with my travel photography and photography generally that I have a graphic style, pretty precise clean lines, I like that in anything, and streamlined. So I think that applies to my street. I try and rough it up a bit, but it's kind of difficult. Street photography is a lot of time you're sitting around just watching people and anticipating what might happen, because what happens is sometimes you'll sit and wait and nothing will happen. That's just the nature of street photography. So you can spend a lot of time and come back with nothing. But it's trying to read the play, look at what's happening. When you see something interesting happening, people are quite predictive. So when you see someone doing something, you kind of sometimes get a, a feeling, you know what's coming next. You know, you know if they're going to be a grab or an embrace or a hug or something. So you're ready for the camera to pounce and take the shot. If I've had a big camera, my DSLR and, and heavy lens, which is what I had when I first started, it's confronting. People are intimidated by it. I understand that. So I resorted then to using my phone camera and it's entirely different. I don't do any confrontational photography like some people. I won't run up to someone, not at this stage, and put a camera in their face and wait for their reaction. If someone says no, I go, okay, there'll be another shot, I think. And I don't want people to be impacted in a negative way by my presence. 
I'd rather people didn't notice because I want to basically capture something that has not been affected by me. It's like that's life as it plays out and I'm just kind of an yeah, invisible observer of that. I'm not really the confrontational type. I, I kind of keep a low profile, try to blend into the background and just let it happen in front of me. I can remember once, I love shooting in galleries because people have got something to look at. So once I went, I was so happy with the print and what she was wearing. And I was so excited, I showed her. She said, oh, can you get rid of it? I'm like, okay. One time in South Korea, I'm at the markets and this little lady, it was a cart of fruit. And I thought that looks really great. And of course, then I flipped the camera up and her arms started flying everywhere. And she was, I think she was probably swearing at the Korean. But obviously she didn't want a photo taken. I put the camera down and said, yeah, no, you know, no good. You have to take the photo. It's how you approach it. I see other photographers do get into sometimes conflicts with people, but they're taking a picture that's probably a little bit too personal or something that's going on. So maybe a couple are having an argument. So it's not a good idea to, to, to kind of poke your camera in there. Probably the only kind of confrontational times have been if I've been photographing where there's been children in the scene and some protective parents have, have had concerns with me photographing their children. Like, why are you photographing my children? Uh, so apart from that, not really. Every day you're bombarded with images. So you're flicking through your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed or whatever, and there's just image up, image up, image coming up. So, and it, it, it's kind of good and bad because obviously people get some exposure. The trouble is I think we get overload. There's too much image we see each day now. So. And that's why people are actually doing the, you know, the social media detox, but actually you know, switching off and going, I've got to put it down for 24 hours. I enjoy social media. My friends in my age group don't participate in it at all. But I think because I do photography, I do. And so for me, it's really important. I still think we see really wonderful street images on Instagram. I've just been on a workshop in India with street photographers because I found it advertised on Instagram. So really, for me, it's really important. And because I'm very new to it, I don't even understand always that a photo is street. I think, well, that's just social documentary, not street. And some people would say to me, well, that social documentary can be street. So I'm still learning about what it is. But I think social media has a place to play, certainly for me, in learning about street. There's some great work out there. Um, there are definitely a lot of people who do it for the likes. And it's easy to get sucked into that. And then there's people who do it for the love. I think most people is probably a combination of the two. Personally, I think that if you get too caught up in chasing likes, you begin to lose touch with actually using it as a form of expression because you expressing what you like might not resound with the audience. And so if you're changing for the audience, then you're actually stopping to take photos that express something of yourself. And I think that's probably the negative side of, of the obsession with likes and social media. I, I, I think actually if you have a look, street photography that's the biggest. If you just look at what's happened since Instagram come on the scene, with people just taking pictures every time they're at a cafe, they're taking pictures of the meals, even the selfie. The selfies are actually street photography because quite often there's, there's the street scenes in behind you. So I think it's actually, at the moment, a lot of social media is actually street photography. Everyone's a photographer these days. We hear that said all the time. But I think it's really important, absolutely, to capture what's going to tell stories for the history. When you, we look back at photos from the 50s and 60s, they're fabulous to see. So I'm imagining one day, regardless of where we're at with technology, these photos will mean something in another 50 years. So I think it's still really important.